Hi everyone and welcome back to another video here in my feature focusing on reviews of electric technology that I find very important in my own setups. And this today is the Bastel Castle 1.5. Not unlike the Dude Mixer, this small synthesizer by Bastel is absolutely amazing in terms of a number of things. Uh, the form factor, the size of the synthesizer, the fact that it is so small, imagine what you could do with this in a very small setup, not unlike my microenvironment series that some of you may have seen on YouTube. Really amazing. It's also a semi-modular synthesizer. For $100, how many synthesizers can be said to be semi-modular? It uses DuPont cables to patch and unpatch things. A uh, lot of possibilities here in terms of wave folding, in terms of the LFO. It's just a really great mini synthesizer and it runs on three AA batteries, so further confirming the versatility and size that uh, can be had with this really wonderful small synthesizer. So now we'll do a, a full review of the Bastel Castel 1.5 and see what you think in terms of the functionality of this very cool small semi-modular synthesizer. Okay, so we'll take a look at the Bastel Castle 1.5 here. Do a little bit of the um, unboxing as you're familiar with with Bastel gear. It comes in this cool little box, not unlike the box that you get with the uh, Dude Mixer if you own one of those. And has the characteristic uh, paper that's always cool that either has uh, some kind of abstract design or in this case um, we are in a drama period. So um, always cool to get that kind of like little bit of uh, brand identity with Bastel and they make great modules and great desktop um, equipment as well. So this is a castle. Obviously I have uh, done a modification here. We'll talk about that a little bit later um, with the knobs. You get the sticker which is always um, appreciated. A little bonus there. And um, in addition you're going to get the um, very extensive instruction manual. You know, their instruction manuals are really well written and well designed. You can also get this online. We'll look at the PDF here in a second. But this is actually very important because unlike the Dude Mixer, which I think is fairly straightforward to get into unless maybe you're trying to figure out how to make a drone or potentially thinking about the wave shaping between channels, with the Castle 1.5, you definitely get into wanting to understand a little bit more about what is under the hood. So again, you can go online and click any of the information that you might want on the Bastel website. And so they have everything that is um, included in the manual as well as additional information. If there's anything, and this instrument would certainly qualify, that involves firmware or anything that could be modified, um, and that's becoming more and more of a trend, certainly with the Daisy Patch and other gear out there that's moving more towards open source and mod mod modifiable uh, firmware and uh, sourceware and so forth, it's becoming more and more common to see this, and that's certainly something you could um, do on your own if you're interested. I haven't taken any of that route, but um, you can see the GitHub link there as well. And you have the uh, PDF information, uh, the assembly guide, which if you happen to have one that was not assembled, there is the um, GitHub uh, Castle firmware that you could uh, take a look at if you are interested. And I think what's important to remember about the Castle is that it's really full-fledged for its size. I think it'd be very um, much a misnomer to think this is a simple synthesizer. You can do quite a bit with it as we're going to get into. It has the ability to send clock out and you can receive clock in. Here's the press release on the Castle from 2017. And you probably know they just released the Castle drum here in 2020. Haven't had a chance to look at that, but this is definitely a line that I think they could take forward in some successful routes. Um, it'd be cool to see a mini effects unit that was maybe patchable in some ways. We don't have a lot of really patchable effects units, so that could be something really cool. And here indeed is the Castle drum. It has uh, eight drum modes and um, also looks super, super promising. One of the things you'll discover with the Castle 1.5, which is the subject of the review today, is that it necessarily doesn't have the ability as much. We will experiment a little bit with uh, percussion sounds, but it's not um, inherently made as a drum synthesizer. Now, for sounds like uh, bass lines, for drones, it is absolutely amazing. Um, it probably shares a little bit in common with the Volca drum, and the Volca drum 
is certainly um, a drum synthesizer, but it also works very well as a bass machine. But I think as, as you're going to hear today with some of the patching that you can do with the Castle 1.5, you can do some really remarkable things. You can use it as a complement to your modular system. You can run um, other sounds into it. You could certainly use the clocking abilities. You could use this as a master clock. You could slave it and uh, use it with your modular system. Create some very cool bass lines and glitchy sounds. Um, really, the sky is the limit with this particular synthesizer once you get into the patching. And the other thing I mentioned earlier that I went ahead and modified the knobs here, you're going to discover actually that these are very, very sensitive. As you start patching, depending on the patch um, that you've created, you're going to discover that very minor permutations or alterations of the knobs will end up in really radically, um, remarkably new sounds. So it's, it's one of the cool things about this mini synthesizer in terms of its use. Very versatile, like the other um, Bastel Dude Mixer, it runs on batteries, so it's really easy to use in a micro environment series like mine. In a small gig, you can see exactly how much space it takes on this uh, small table, and it's very little space, so you have the point of reference of the pens and that mini uh, potted plant. So next, let's jump into a getting started tips to give you more sensibilities about how to get started with the Bastel Castle 1.5. Okay, so we'll look at some uh, getting started tips that relate to just using your castle in various senses. The first tip I would suggest is to watch your output level. So I discovered this actually in recording some of the sound demos for this video. And in particular, I noticed the signal was really hot. So what I tried to do was to compare the um, output signal into my mixer from the castle uh, to the, in this case, the Elotone multi-synth. And if you get a chance to see the difference here, you'll just see that the castle signal is really hot. So one of the things I can do is I could adjust the gain on my mixer if I wanted to record it direct. I noticed some issues putting it through the Ventress dual reverb and it was uh, definitely peaking a little bit. So one of the things I might suggest is to simply attenuate your signal so you could put it into a mixer in your Eurorack, you could put it through a VCA, you could put it through any kind of gain adjustment module like the mutable ears. Very easy just to do one simple gain adjustment and then at that point you could route it into your um, reverb or other effects units such that it doesn't peak. So my next tip is to try experimentation with patch points. And it's the case that this is an instrument where you really cannot damage the uh, instrument itself by patching ins and outs. There's a lot of freedom and flexibility in this small semi-modular synthesizer as you would note say in a lot of your rack modules. So what I might recommend is becoming more familiar with the castle using the instruction manual, but really getting one of those patch sheets because those I think allow you a more visual sense of the ins and the outs of the instrument. And if you have that handy, you can start to experiment with some of those patch points and even notate um, some of your diagrams of your patching on one of those patch sheets. If you look at one of my sound examples at the end of this video, I will try to just do this experiment where I uh, experiment with patching in, in different senses. So definitely do it. Very small, minute tweaks I've noticed of the knobs on the castle will produce a lot of sonic variation. So as you are experimenting with patch points, you can also move the knobs very subtly to see what sort of effects you have. Um, also refer to the instruction manual because the manual does have a lot of good tips about modulation, about using some of the six specific synthesis modes on the castle. And my next tip is watching your fingers. And by this I mean that the castle is so small in terms of working with your DuPont cables that in some cases something will be patched or you think it's patched and it's not actually patched. And in this next example here, this happened while I was recording a demo for this video. I thought something was patched, um, it sounded not quite right, and indeed one of the DuPonts had slipped out. And that of course is always a concern with any DuPont gear is that if you have a small space to work with, um, it's really hard sometimes to patch those cables as you're working on your modulations, your oscillator sounds, and so forth. 
Another tip I have here I think is really important is to take advantage of all the community out there. I just recently joined the Bastel uh, desktop group, really great group as you can see, almost a thousand members. And the reason I recommend this is you will find experiments and new ways of using your Bastel gear in ways that you didn't think of before. So maybe someone is doing an experiment patching the DuPont cables from their castle to another small DuPont synthesizer. Or maybe there's a certain effects unit or technique that someone is using with the castle. It's so just a great opportunity to join a group like this. This is found on Facebook. I recommend that you uh, join it. It's very easy to fill out uh, the short survey and then they will let you in very quickly. So that is definitely recommended if you get a chance to join this or another similar group that can give you some really great community advice about using your semi-modular synthesizer. So at this point, let's jump into the six synthesis modes. These are direct out of the manual. What I'll do here is just give you a sense of the sound. In a couple cases, I will modulate um, using some of the parameters just to give you a sense of the movement and what it can sound like. And I will also then just diagram in order how you produce these uh, particular sounds using the output from the secondary oscillator as well as the mode terminal either being connected to the plus, the minus, or not connected at all. So here are the six sound modes in order. Feel free to jump ahead if you've already heard some of these on your own.
Okay, so let's take a moment to look at how we can use the castle as a really um, impressive in and out machine for your modular world. Um, you could think of it as a source to create new possibilities for modulation. You can add another voice to your modular system. You can route audio or CV signals in such a way that you can expand the potential of your modular or expand the potential of the castle. And as in all cases, uh, keep in mind the resources available, ranging from the uh, manual, which I think is not maybe as intuitive as, as it could be in terms of what it explains. Um, what's better are some of the videos online, including Bastel's video that has um, a lot of the information about the castle, and I've taken that and actually made myself um, a cheat sheet. And by the way, patch sheets like these are also available online, um, and we can talk about more of that later. So what I'll do here is take advantage of the in and the out. Again, what's really cool about the castle compared to other um, small semi-modular desktop synths is that there's a full-fledged in and out feature. You want to keep in mind that in order to use both the in and out at the same time, you'll want to use one of these splitter cables. I actually bought a bunch of these on Amazon uh, available for a pretty cheap price because I wanted to use them with uh, a lot of my small desktop semi-modular gear. If you just want to use one, either the in or the output for that jack, you could of course use a modular uh, mono cable of any sort and still have the ability to um, either work with input signals or output signals. Keep in mind it's very hard to uh, see here and I'm probably going to pull off these uh, knobs because they're just making it really hard for me to patch the Bastel castle. So um, we're going to be looking at this uh, in and output jack. So the L in the right, the left in the right. So keep in mind one of these will work for your input and the output. Um, in this case it looks like it's the um, the input is the black in this case. So I'm assuming that should be the same if you purchase this type of cable uh, which is the tip. And um, so you're going to be working with this in and out jack here. So what I'm going to do is take my input and I'm going to actually insert that into the wave shape and I'll be doing something with that in a second. But first let me bring in some drums because I want to show you how I'm going to sync and use um, the castle with my assimilator which is a much more expensive sample drum module. Really amazing module. So we'll just get a beat going. I have a Buchla kit loaded in here. My main clock source will be the uh, Pico Random and I'm going to actually take the clock in from my Pico trigger and use that. So I'm first going to have these three drum patterns playing. But the first thing we're going to do is simply create a sync. So we want to time our drums with the same clock as the sample and hold module signal that's going to go into the castle. Um, and I like using, by the way, when I'm prototyping, a sample and hold uh, sound because it's very easy to create a very dramatic shift in the sound such that you know exactly what's being modulated on your synthesizer. So let's bring in the castle. First we'll unplug the sample and hold. Again, my master clock is coming from the trigger. That's triggering the drums. That is going to control then the speed of any of my outputs, my random pulse, and in this case the sample and hold. So let's first bring in the castle with no modulation. And I have it going through a very mild uh, plate reverb on the Venture Stool reverb. And of course we can adjust the pitch and do anything as we normally would. But let's immediately patch in the modulation. And what I've done is I've very simply routed it from my, my eye, my input jack, again, which is coming from the sample and hold, haven't plugged it in yet, and that's going into the wave shape. So it's going to create some really dramatic sounds. So you'll hear this immediately with the sample and hold. Okay, and right there, I think what you're hearing in terms of the combination of sounds really justifies the price of the castle. The castle, unlike, say, the uh, Elotone Multisynth, can be used not just as its own sound source for creating really cool drones or randomized sequences. The sequencing potentials are really brought to bear with that stepped 
um, block that you can use in three different ways, 16 step, eight step loop, and random voltages, depending on your bit in patching right there. We're not messing with that yet. But you can hear this kind of organic sound developing with these Buchla sounds from our, my simulator drums and then the sample and hold controlling the castle with the wave shape altering with the sample and hold signal. I can adjust this more. Um, the timbre is a nice mod wheel to get some dramatic alterations. That's a pretty darn good groove right there. Okay, so now let's add something to this. We're going to use then our output. So this is going to take any signal that can be routed to that output jack. Again, refer to your in and out schematic. It's going to be that right jack. In this case, it will be our red on this ring tip uh, splitter cable. So what I might want to do is figure out exactly uh, what to patch. So I think I'll take maybe an LFO here. Actually, let's try for some random stepped out action here. Just gonna plug that in. So I think that's gonna give me 16 steps of uh, a sequence. Now, what we're going to do is unplug two trigger inputs. Now you're just hearing that kind of it's a bookless sample, but it sounds a little bit like a hi-hat or something like that. Again, this is coming out of my ring tip uh, splitter. I'm going to put that in CVA. And you're already hearing an effect here. So listen to how that's changing. So I have this routed into that particular drum's pitch through CVA. The assimilator is an awesome module because you can basically modulate any CV parameter, any parameter really, on the entire unit and create incredibly um, altered modulated tones. So I can adjust the amount of pitch modulation. So I can put that pretty high and then just listen to how that is changing with the steps here. I want to, let's get a little crazy here. I want to change all the drums. We'll just do that same parameter. Again, you're still just hearing uh, the one drum, but we're going to fix that in a second. And I'm just doing a check here. So I've got my three channels. Okay, so the three channels of drums, just using a malt, are getting that same signal, that uh, step signal, coming out of the castle. And now when I plug in the other two drums, and let's just take the castle down for a bit so you can hear it. Again, just one drum sound. Let's load in the other two and you'll hear this. And just listen to that beautiful magic that we're getting through pitch modulation of the assimilator. Again, the Castle 1.5 is providing all that modulation. So this level of dramatic ability to work with your modular system, I think really makes the Castle such a great value for its money. Uh, let's bring in the Castle once more, and we can hear just a little bit more of um, the sounds as we modify them here.
and you can just experiment again by twisting a little bit uh, our LFO rate, we're going to hear uh, different effects coming out of the castle. Okay, so another possible use we'll talk about is routing any external audio you might have into the castle. So in order to do this, we'll use the technique we're already familiar with. So we'll take our splitter, or again, if you're not concerned about also using the output block on the castle, you could certainly use a mono cable. We just want to make sure that we have our um, input terminal patch, and then we're going to patch that in after we bring in some audio. So first we'll just hear a droning sound from the castle. And as I've been doing, I could experiment in terms of taking this and putting it into another input. Because what I want to do is route the sound into the castle and then modify it using the uh, knobs and so forth. So we'll just uh, try the wave shaper block. And you'll hear the sound coming from the Folktech Mescaline. And it's just here. So all I've done is take the audio out routed that into the input jack and then I patched it to the wave shape input and I can begin to mess with the parameters. getting a lot of interesting tones there. So you're hearing wave shaping, and one of the things I like about using a device in this way is it's highly experimental. So as I'm listening to it, recording this, I'm not maybe entirely sure what sound is coming from the mescaline into the castle. And then when I'm modulating something, am I modulating um, an audio tone from the mescaline or am I modulating something here on the castle in terms of the oscillator so I think that's one of the great things about using a device like this is it allows you to create some really experimental sounds in some organic senses that maybe you wouldn't normally create due to some of the simple patching that we're talking about here today Okay, so for this next experiment, I said the heck with it. I'm just going to try something I haven't tried before. Um, I've been somewhat leery of taking any of my DuPont gear, my numerous devices that use DuPont cables, and patching them together, worrying about voltage and ground issues. I said the heck with it. I saw these sitting there, um, coming from my folk duck matter, and I said I'm just going to try it out. So what this experiment will do is take advantage of that uh, sample and hold circuit coming in that is patched to the input and then I will have that patched to the wave shaper. What I'm then going to do is continue to use again some of the same clock signals I've used in other parts of this experiment. You'll hear some trigger drums again uh, a different Buchla kit on the assimilator. You'll hear some triggering using the audio output of the castle and that will actually trigger some sounds from Planck. So you have the drum sounds, the assimilator sounds. I will also take um, some of my effects units and those will be interspersed with some of the sounds that you'll be hearing. And then the thing I'm going to do that's new is I'm going to take three outputs. And so I'm going to plug, you'll hear this throughout the experiment as different sounds come in. These will be the high pitch clicky type sounds that the matter is really good at producing. So I'm going to take 
uh, these stepped outputs and run that into just some random terminals uh, triggering sounds on the Folktech Matter, which is a very cool, it's a Matter 1, which has the DuPont cables, Matter 2, got rid of those, which I think is, is kind of too bad. And then I'm also going to take, I believe here, the LFO, and I'll take that output. And as you go through this uh, sound poem, you'll hear the sounds on the Matter changing as I'm altering uh, some of the patching. And I actually just recorded that, so you won't actually hear or see the patching in real time. But that is the gist of it. So again, we're really using the castle as a sort of modular hub and really an audio hub. So you're hearing the sound from the castle, you're hearing some drum sounds, you're hearing a couple sounds from Plunk that are also synchronized here, and you're hearing the matter sounds come in as the castle is triggering those. So uh, please sit back and enjoy this uh, short sound poem here focused on using the castle as a hub for your modular system.
All right, that's going to be it today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this review of the Bastille Castle. For me, it's one of the most uh, innovative small synthesizers I have. I use it all the time in my microenvironment series, and it's just a great piece of technology for me to use. Um, not only is it really small and handy to have in a small desktop space for performance, but it really sounds super, super good. Um, it's just one of the best synthesizers out there that I can think of in a desktop setting. So thanks for listening, and do come back for future videos here in my reviews of music technology that is important and significant in my own experimental and electronic music work. Mm -hmm.